Pearson's correlation is a statistical analysis that measures the strength and direction of the relationship between two variables. It is denoted by small letter r. Pearson's correlation coefficient can be calculated by hand or by use of software. In this video, I will demonstrate how to calculate Pearson's correlation coefficient by hand, interpret and report results. This video is a follow-up to the video I published on how to perform Pearson's correlation analysis. So, to fully understand the content of this video as a beginner, you are please required to see that video first. My name is Titoken and this is Titoken Mark Solutions, a YouTube channel for improving the knowledge of how to do things. Now, let's assume a fish farmer had 10 fish ponds and wanted his fishes to grow with interest in weight. So, this farmer fed the fishes in the 10 ponds with the same feeds at different number of times per day. At the end of six months, one randomly selected fish from each pond was weighed to ascertain the weight gained. The record of the feeds per day and the weight gained are given in this table of data, where n is the number of fish, x is the feeds per day, and y is weight gained by the fishes. Looking at this table of data, the condition for performing the person's correlation, as stated in my earlier video, are hereby satisfied. And you might also be tempted to say the weight gained by the fishes were caused by the fish per day. That statement is inappropriate because, as you can see from the table, the fishes responded differently to the feeds, but not necessarily to the number of times the feeds were given to them by, per day. For example, the first fish and the tenth fish were fed twice per day each, but they had different amount of weight gained. Similarly, the second and the seventh fish were fed five times each per day, but they also had different amount of weight gained. In this case, rather than say the weight gained by the fish was caused by the feeds per day, you can simply say there is a relationship between the feeds per day and the weight gained by the fishes. This is because correlation analysis is not a causal effect. So, the question now is, what is the correlation between the feeds per day and the weight gained by the fishes? To answer this question, you have to calculate the Pearson's correlation coefficient, which in this case is a two-tier test analysis that would definitely tell you about the strength of the relationship, if any exists, and the direction in which it exists. Now, to calculate the Pearson's correlation coefficient, I will be using this formula where R is person's correlation, N is number of fish, X is feeds per day, and Y is weight gained by the fish. Now, the first step is to state the hypothesis. In this correlation analysis, the null hypothesis states that there is no relationship between the feeds per day and the weight gained, that is, rho is equal to zero. Why the alternate hypothesis states that there is a relationship between the feeds per day and the weight gained, that is, rho is not equal to zero. Now, the next step is to calculate the person's correlation coefficient, and to be able to do this calculation, I will return to the table of data and expand the columns like this, so that I now have xy, x square, and y square as required by the correlation formula. Here, I multiplied the x data and the y data to fill the xy column like this. And I multiplied the x data by itself to fill the x square column like this. And then I multiplied the y data by itself to fill the y square column like this. Now, add up each data column to obtain the sigma summation or total sums like this. These total sums are the basic means for calculating person's correlation coefficient. So, substitute these total sums or the sigma summations into this formula accordingly like this. Then, when you evaluate the numerator and the denominator, you will get this. And when you multiply the two terms inside the square root of the denominator and then take the square root 
you will get this. Now, divide the numerator by the denominator to finally get the person's correlation coefficient, R. You can reduce the value to two decimal places to get 0 0.93 like this. And this correlation coefficient is positive. This means there is a positive correlation between the feet per day and the weight gained. And when you place the coefficient value on the number line like this, you will see it is very close to plus one, which means the positive correlation between the feet per day and the weight gained is strong. Now, you can immediately calculate R square, which is the coefficient of determination and which is the percentage value that explains the variance in the weight gained. To do this, you take the correlation coefficient and square it like this. Then multiply 0 0.93 by 0 0.93 like this to get 0 0.8649. This is the coefficient of determination, which must be expressed in percentage by taking this value and dividing it by 100 to get 86.49% like this. By implication, this means that 86.49% of the variance in weight gained is explained by the feeds per day. This therefore implies that the remaining 13.51% is explained by other external factors unaccounted for. And this can be attributed to why some fishes have different amount of weight gained even when they were fed the same number of times per day. That is, the extra weight gained by some of the fishes may have been accounted for by some external factors. We have calculated for Pearson's correlation coefficient at 0.93. But the big question now is, is this correlation coefficient statistically significantly different than zero or not? Do we reject or accept the null hypothesis? This brings us to the next step, which is testing the significance of the calculated person's correlation coefficient. And this is what you can do by performing a t-test calculation to obtain t-value and then compare the result with the critical value of t from the student's t distribution table as I will show you shortly. Now let's perform a t-test. The formula for t-test is given as this. Since the variables are known, where arrow is the calculated person's correlation coefficient and is 0.93, df is degrees of freedom which is given as n minus 2 where n is the number of fish weighed and is 8, then substitute the values into the t-test equation like this. And when you have solved the equation as appropriate, you will get 7.16 as the t-value approximated to two decimal places. That is, at eight degrees of freedom, the t-value is 7.16. Now, turn to the student's t-distribution table to obtain the critical value of t. So at eight degrees of freedom, and at 5% significance level, the critical value of T is 2.306, obtained at the point of intersection. This means at 8 degrees of freedom and significance level of 0.05, the T value is 7.16, while the critical value is 2.306. And following the condition for rejecting or accepting the null hypothesis, by simply comparing the two values, it shows that T value is greater than the critical value. This means that the correlation is statistically significantly different than zero. That is, arrow is not equal to zero. And this implies that we will reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternate hypothesis because there is a relationship or correlation between the feeds per day and the weight gained. And in reporting the result, you are expected to write the result in APA style to meet the requirements of the general standard of writing correlation results. So I will present the result in APA style as follows. The person's product correlation test revealed that fits per day and the weight gained by the fishes were strongly positively related. The correlation coefficient at eight degrees of freedom, arrow eight, is equal to plus 0.93 P less than 0.05, therefore, 
86.49% of the variance in the weight gained was explained by the feeds per day. As you can see, it is statistically inappropriate to have said the weight gained by the fishes were caused by the feeds per day. This is because correlation is not a causal effect. But there were external factors that also accounted for the variance observed that were not explained by the coefficient of determination of the correlation. So this is how Pearson's correlation analysis can be calculated by hand, interpreted, and reported. However, it is unlikely that correlation of large data size is calculated by hand. So in my next videos, I shall be showing you how to perform different statistical analysis, including Pearson's correlation analysis using statistical software, SPSS. So I hereby encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel now to be notified as soon as I post new content. Subscription is free. Thanks for staying with me to this moment as we have come to the end of this video. If you like this video or the content, please give it a thumbs up to like it, share this video, and please subscribe. Once again, subscription is free. Thanks for your time and see you again in my next video.